Let's talk some chess. In this video, we're going to go over the Immortal Draw game. This was played in 1872 in Vienna. The two players are named Karl Hampe and Philip Meitner, and they're sort of known for this game. And we, we know how it's going to end. It's called the Immortal Draw game, but it's really, really exciting in how it gets to that ending. Uh, so let's get right into it. We start with e4 from white, e5 from black, knight to c3, bishop here to c5. So pretty much normal moves so far. Maybe this bishop to c5 move is not super normal today. But now white already makes a strange looking move and plays knight to a4, challenging this bishop on c5. Um, this is not the best move because it allows black an immediate sort of sacrifice attack uh, sort of situation um, and black takes the pawn on f2 which is recommended by the engine so sacrificing the bishop um, and putting the king in check and this is the first step in a series of moves that's going to force the white king out of sort of uh, its home base and up the board into uh, very dangerous opponent territory. So here, uh, the best move is just to take the bishop on f2, um, but now comes queen to h4, and this comes with check. Uh, it looks very natural to block with g3, but the problem with this is then you get queen takes on e4, uh, and this forks the knight and the rook, which means you lose your material advantage and you have a king that's awkwardly placed on f2. So instead, white correctly brings the king to e3, defends the e4 pawn, but now you get uh, queen to f4 check. The queen is protected by the pawn and the king is forced to move even further from uh, its home habitat. So we get king to d3 and now uh, d5 by uh, black. Uh, king scooches over even more to c3, and here the queen takes on e4, preparing to maybe come to uh, c4 with, uh, this would be checkmate. So you can't, you can't ignore this threat. Um, this was actually an opportunity for white to sort of uh, put a dominating uh, stamp on the game and just, you know, take advantage of the position. The correct move here is actually d4, and it looks like a strange move. Um, but, you know, you can't really take back with a queen because then you get into a queen trade. So if you do take, uh, uh, e takes on d5 with check, um, then you get queen takes on d4, and now you're threatening to trade queens. After black brings the queen to e1 with check, you can block with the bishop on, G on d2. Queen takes the rook, but now you get, uh, white can just develop pieces normally, knight to f3. Um, knight comes to c6 with an attack on the queen, but now the queen just takes on g7 and will, you know, this rook will fall on uh, h8, and white has equalized material, white might be up material, um, and has some very nice developed pieces ready to attack the enemy king. So this would be uh, a huge advantage for uh, white. But instead of d4, which doesn't look like a very reasonable move, um, here white just plays king to b3. The king is a little bit safer here. It looks like at first glance the queen can play a dangerous um, c4 check, but uh, you can't because the bishop is covering uh, the c4 square. So instead, uh, black brings the knight to a6. We'll see the point of this move in a second. And now we get, uh, well, first the, the, the immediate threat is uh, this b4 square. If the queen makes it to b4, uh, you know, if white makes some silly move, then queen to b4 will be checkmate because it's protected by the knight. So instead, uh, white plays uh, a3, which, cu which cuts off the b4 square from the knight and uh, provides a sort of escape route for the king. But here's really the, the pivotal moment in the attack. Black decides uh, to go all out and not let the white king retreat and, and force it to walk up the board. And here black plays queen takes on a4 with check. So a really nice queen sack takes the knight and really you have no, you, you have no option here but to take the queen. So white accepts the sacrifice, king takes on a4, and now you get this uh, knight to c5. So that's the idea behind the knight on a6. Now the knight checks the king, and the king is sort of forced even more into the position. So the king doesn't want to march up the board uh, to the fifth rank, so instead here white plays uh, king to b4. This comes with an attack on the knight on c5, but now you have uh, a5 uh, with check. So black is, is sacrificing even more material, uh, basically baiting the white king to take the knight, which in fact the white king does. Um, you can't move to, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, this doesn't work. Uh, I don't know why that's doing that. Um, king to c3 doesn't work. You, you're going to run into some, some problems, some serious problems there. Um, uh, you, can, you can imagine this isn't a very fun position to play. Um, sorry, I should be more specific about what's happening. So if the king moves to uh, c3, then you just get d4 check. The only move here is the king has to come to c4, and then the bishop comes to e6 with check, and now the king is moving even further up the board. So that doesn't work. So you can't retreat the king. The best move here is just to take the knight on c5. Um, and now you get uh, a really sort of slow but silent move. Um, you get knight to e7. 
And this, like, I, I think, you know, we all would look at this and say, why not just play b6 check, sort of forcing the king to run around even more. Um, and b6 is a powerful idea, but it needs, uh, before you can play b6, you have to play this knight to e7 move. And the idea here is if white just makes a silly move, like knight to f3, then you can play b6. And uh, now the king only has sort of one square to move to, this b5 square. The king cannot move and take on d5 because the knight is protecting it. So that's the idea behind this knight to e7 move. And after the king moves to b5, of course, you get this bishop to d7, and this, uh, this is checkmate. The bishop is slicing this way, um, the pawns are taking off these squares, and the rook is taking off uh, the a-file. So uh, that's the idea, that's the threat behind this knight to e7. You're threatening uh, checkmate in just a couple moves. And here, uh, white defends this by bringing the bishop to b5 with check. So developing the bishop, getting a defender near the king, hoping to sort of disrupt the position. Um, and here, black just sidesteps the king to d8. Um, this is, you know, the proper move. It looks like you might want to block with the pawn on c6, but then you take away this really powerful b6 check, um, and y you don't want to do that. So instead, the king moves to uh, d8, um, and now we're sort of back to the scary situation of, uh, you know, a, a silly move here. Uh, if you bring the knight to f3, then you're going to get b6, and now this actually is checkmate because the bishop is taking away the b5 square. Um, so it's hard to find the, the proper move here for white, um, but there is a move that essentially forces the game into a draw, even though the king is sort of stranded here on the fifth rank. So see if you can find the proper move while I give you a moment. Okay, it's a very strange looking move, probably the move that, that gave this game the name of the immortal draw. The, the move is bishop to c6. And this is a, a really weird looking move. You're just putting the bishop on a random square. You're sacrificing the bishop. You're offering it up uh, for the pawn on b7. But the idea here is that the bishop cannot be taken. Um, so let's say the pawn takes on c6. You've just taken back a bishop, but the attack has completely petered out. There's no more b6 check. The king can, you know, um, the king can rest easy because there's no immediate checks from these pieces. Here, white can play something like c4, uh, black takes on c4, king takes on c4, and now the king is free to retreat, and uh, white essentially has a massive material advantage. So you can't take the bishop, but the nice thing about the bishop on c6, and as we saw what happened in the game, is black does play this b6 check, um, forcing the king to uh, b5, but now there's no bishop to d7 checkmate because the, light, the white light squared bishop is blocking off that diagonal. So that's the whole idea behind putting the bishop on c6. You know, you're, it can't be taken because then the attack beaters out and you're blocking this really important diagonal. So a really brilliant move um, uh, here and that's sort of what gives the game uh, its name of, of an immortal draw game. So anyways, the king retreats to b5 and now you know you, you have to be careful if you're playing with black pieces because you, you can't let this king escape, right? Because then um, if the king is able to run away, you're just down a queen and other material and, and you're gonna lose. So here, uh, black plays uh, knight to c6. And uh, again, you know, there's a lot of threats here for the white king. So again, if white just plays just a, a normal looking move, um, then what am I doing here? Sorry. If white just plays a normal looking move, is that what I want to play? I don't know why my thing is weird. Okay, sorry. I know what I want to show. Um, if white just plays like c3 to prevent the knight from coming to uh, d4 or b4, um, let's, let's show this. Let's say white plays uh, knight to f3, normal looking move, then you get uh, this knight to d4 check. And even though the knight is um, attacked by uh, the white, so let's, let's say you know, this knight takes, then let, let me do it with the pawn, the pawn, the pawn, sorry. I'm going back and forth between lines, but the pawn I think makes it look a little bit prettier. It's the same result, but. So let's say white plays c3, cuts off the d, d4 uh, square, then black will play knight to d4 anyways, even though the pawn is attacking the knight. And after the pawn takes the knight, then you get bishop to d7, and now uh, this is actually checkmate. So the bishop is slicing this way, the pawns are taking off these squares, the rook is taking off the a-file, and this is checkmate. And it's the same exact thing if you play knight to f3, uh, knight to d4, uh, knight to f3, and then the same uh, bishop. Uh, uh, actually, I'm not sure if this would work. I, it, there's no way... I have to check the lines. There's no way this works because uh, otherwise the stockfish would have told me, but maybe I'm playing something wrong. But um, basically you, you have to worry about this threat of knight to d4. You have to worry about black checkmating you. So here uh, it forces white to go deeper into the position with king takes knight on e6. 
Um, but now you have sort of a, a brilliant response from black. So now, you know, black is down a ton of material. It's just two rooks and a bishop, whereas uh, white is up a queen and a knight. And, you know, this should be, you know, if white can get the king to safety, this should be an easy win. Um, so black really has to keep the attack going and uh, does with a really, uh, so actually let's pause and see if you can find the proper move to sort of guarantee a draw here for black. Okay, it's another bishop sacrifice, so a nice theme of the light squared bishops being sacrificed, uh, you know, on this side of the board. It is bishop to b7 check. And here there are only two squares for the king to move to, um, and uh, it looks like you can take the bishop, but you most certainly can't. So let's say you take the bishop on b8, then you get this really nasty king to d7 move, and now you are in trouble because this rook is coming to b8, and this will be checkmate if the rook gets there. The king is cutting off the escape square, the rooks are checking the king, and here with the white pieces you can play a series of sort of checks, um, but uh, so, you know, just checking the black king, but eventually um, the queen will be taken and there's no more checks and you're going to get this rook coming to b8 with, with checkmate. And so you, you can't take the bishop. The bishop looks like it's being sacrificed, but it can't be taken. So instead, the only other square for the king to move to is b5. And then you just get uh, rook, uh, bishop to a6, again, checking the king. And again, the king has no real squares to move to. Um, you know, the king, th this is not going to work for the same reasons that we saw before. So the king moves back to uh, c6. Bishop moves back. And in this position, the players agreed to a draw because, as you see, there's going to be a repetition here. So... A really awesome uh, game. I think like it's cool to see how many pieces that black sacrificed to get the white king all the way to the sixth rank. But then white had some magic of his own to uh, uh, you know, sort of sacrifice a bishop and make sure there was a draw out of it. But then right at the end, I think it's impressive. This uh, bishop to b7 move is really impressive to prevent white from you know, marshalling these extra forces and getting an attack of his own going. So I think a game worthy of uh, the name, The Immortal Draw, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Drop a like, drop a subscribe, and we'll see you next time.